This is the lecture for web architectures or architectures used in web applications for the CSC 3100 web programming course. This was recorded in spring 2017 and I am Dr. Jerry Ganad. So when you think of architectures for applications, um, I imagine that you typically think about um, the components that you have in the architecture, the components you have in a system, and, and for most of the applications that you've created thus far, far for the courses that you're in, um, you pr pretty much have you know, either a, a few classes if you're doing object-oriented programming, um, either C++ or Java, um, and they typically are monolithic systems. They, they run on a single uh, machine they run in, you know, maybe you're running this on a um, on a server as a text-based application, or maybe you've even created um, a uh, a GUI-based application. But for the most part, they've been running on a single machine. With web applications, we really start to um, take different parts of the application and spread them across different uh, different components, but really across different machines. So what we have with web applications are what we call interior architectures. And uh, you can really break it down to there being three tiers. You have a client tier, a server tier, and a, a data tier. So the client tier is um, typically what you would think of as being um, your local machine. So it's a desktop or laptop computer. And, and you know this, right? So you have a web browser that, um, that you use as a client. And then what you do is you, you access some URL. So there's this connection here between the client and the server that gets realized through a URL. And you're accessing, accessing some server at that point. For most of the web applications that are out there, um, the uh, the application itself, the things that run on the server and beyond, are, um, are executed uh, either in part on the client through the things that are delivered from the server to the browser in the form of HTML uh, and, and, and JavaScript for that matter. Uh, but then you have a certain part of the application that runs on the server um, that accesses data that could be, uh, could be located um, in some other location. It doesn't have to be on the on the same server. This data could be um, could be anywhere. It could be on some other um, some other backend server. So it's hosted on one or more servers and that's where you end up getting these end tiers. So you still have on the top two tiers the client and some initial server. Uh, but then you have uh, things like application services. You know, things that may be running on you know completely different boxes. They'd be running on completely different uh, machines that uh, that are connected to the initial server through um, through other protocols. Things like <coughs> um, HTTP protocols. If you're talking about web services, uh, there might be other protocols depending on the type of um, application service you're using. An example of this might be. Um, a web service that gives you access to, um, I don't know, to data that, uh, that is uh, hosted by the government. Actually, those would be things like data services. Uh, but you can also have application services where you have um, certain functionalities, certain behaviors that are, are delivered to the server. Uh, these could be things like portals to other applications. These could be um, full applications that are being um, provided to, um, to the client through the server. For the course that uh, you're in this semester, uh, we're using a number of different technologies and you'll see this uh, obviously through um, the development that we do in the in-class exercises and the programming assignments that you have. Our primary um, technology that we're accessing is something called Claude 9. 
Um, it is an application that has both um, an IDE um, as well as access to a terminal, uh, a Linux terminal through, uh, through the web interface. For us, we're going to be doing Rails hosting as well as, um, as uh, using a local Git repository that we will connect to an external uh, Git repository through Bitbucket. One of the things that you might do, it's not going to be required and we may play around with it at some point, is uh, you may end up deploying your applications to something like Heroku uh, for the final application. As a matter of fact, uh, when you're accessing uh, my portfolio site that I've created as part of a demonstration for the course, um, that is an application that has been deployed on Heroku um, and um, pretty much every um, programming assignment that you have will be accessed through that, uh, through that service. Specifically on the Cloud9 uh, infrastructure, we're going to be developing Ruby on Rails applications um, at some point in the semester. And essentially, the Cloud9 infrastructure is a Linux VM um, that, uh, that's being hosted on their infrastructure. Uh, and on top of that, uh, we'll have the, the Rails environment, and we'll be writing Ruby code um, as well as HTML. And actually, in the next slide, you'll see uh, more details on that. We're starting off, actually, with creating um, static web pages that we're running on top of uh, a system called Jekyll, which runs on top of, uh, uh, runs on top of Rails. As far as the actual Ruby on Rails stack that we're going to be accessing, uh, we um, are developing all of that on top of a, a, Postgres, a Postgres database um, that is part of, of uh, how um, Rails is uh, storing data persistently. Uh, you can use other database uh, implementations, but we'll be using Postgres um, this semester. On top of that, uh, you have uh, Ruby that's executed, um, which ends up generating um, HTML. Um, you'll also find here in this course that uh, we'll be doing some things with AngularJS, which is a framework that was, uh, I believe, originally created by Google, uh, as well as the Bootstrap um, um, CSS framework, which was created by Twitter. So our focus really, um, as far as the course is concerned, is really in this box uh, within the stack, although we will be doing some things um, with Postgres. And when I say this box, I'm talking about uh, the top two layers of this, uh, of this diagram, uh, but also be doing some things here on, um, uh, with database. Uh, and probably should, this should be extended, this box should be extended to the Ruby piece of this, because. Um, Certainly, we'll be doing a lot of Ruby coding. Now, as far as Cloud9 is concerned, uh, when you log in, uh, you'll probably see windows that look similar to this, although I've configured this uh, so that I've got the, the night times of the classic view within Cloud9, so a darker screen. Um, there is a coding window that is part of this environment. Uh, and that's where obviously you'll be doing most of your coding. It's, it's got several tabs um, along the top and you'll see this in one of the other videos. There's a navigation window, sorry, a terminal window here at the bottom that uh, uh, will allow you to create, uh, uh, well, you can, you can create various instances of the terminal by clicking on the plus button. Um, that'll essentially give you a command line interface to the, the Linux VM. Um, and we'll, you know, the development of, of um, code in this environment is an interplay between writing the code up in the upper window as well as executing a number of commands in the terminal window uh, in, order to, um, in order to start servers, delete files, add files, commit things to Git, and so forth. And finally, over on the far left is the navigation window. Um, this is very similar, obviously, to various navigation uh, interfaces that you've seen, um, both in the Windows, um, and Mac, and, and Linux environments. Anyway, that's the basic infrastructure we'll be working with this semester. Um,
Um, certainly, um, there's a lot more to it. Uh, some of the videos that are out on the YouTube channel will cover over those details. Anyway, that concludes this lecture.